Hi, my name is Jessica Starke. I'm a PhD student from the University of Tübingen in Germany, but I'm originally from Bulgaria. My family lives in a village which is called Bialopoli, near to the city of Stara Zagora. And the picture which you can see now is taken from Bulgaria uh, in summer 2016. You see my family's garden and you see the neighbor's house or the rest what is left of it. And during the last earthquake, their house was heavily destroyed. Uh, you see the collapsed roof and the collapsed uh, collapsed walls and earthquakes occur regularly and in different intensities in Bulgaria. So the effect of an earthquake on the Earth's surface is called intensity and depending on how much energy is actually released, the earthquake can be felt as light, medium or violent like in the case uh, which is showing the picture. In the past I was really afraid of uh, earthquakes and I was all the time wondering why such destructions can actually happen and learning more about earthquakes has helped me a lot to understand them better and one thing what I've noticed is that actually we can do quite a lot about earthquakes and that we can actually also do quite a lot to minimize earthquake hazards. So I welcome you to today's learning video lesson on seismic waves and I hope that the knowledge which you will learn today will help you a lot to understand earthquakes better and to keep calm and do the right thing before, during and after your next earthquake. So today you will learn on seismic waves and before we start our first uh, activity I would like to ask you to discuss the following questions. Why do earthquakes occur? Um, did you ever experience an earthquake on your own? And how does it felt like? What was it like? What did he or she did? Uh, during the earthquake. And we will see us after the break. Hi, welcome back. Now that you have had the chance to talk about your personal experiences, we would like to prepare our first hands-on activity. Therefore, you will need following material, a metal pen, construction paper, a handful of beans and approximately one liter of water and most importantly, a spoon. So what does this mean? You take the metal pen, turn it around so that the bottom of the metal pen is facing upward you touch the hand, uh, you touch the metal pan with your hand and you take the spoon and then strike the pan with the spoon. What do you feel in your hand and why do you feel it? Then secondly, you can uh, take the construction paper. So you have the construction paper on the pan and then you are going to sprinkle some beans on top of the construction paper. Then use the spoon, strike the pan and try to think about what is going to happen to the beans. Then you can remove the construction paper with the beans and turn the metal pan around so that you can fill water into the metal pan. So this means you can fill the water inside the metal pan and then Afterwards, you put the construction paper on top of the water and then strike the pan filled with water and the beans on top of it. Please try to think about what is going to happen. Please predict first and then try to figure out if your observations support your predictions. We will see you soon. Hi, welcome back, let's see how you did. In the first setup, you stroked the pan with the spoon. I hope that you felt the vibration in your hand. Let me show this to you again. In the second setup, you stroked the pan and the beans with the construction paper on top on this. Uh, let me show to you what happened to the beans. In the third setup, uh, you filled the pan with water and put the beans with the construction paper on top of the pan. Uh, no, sorry, inside, inside the water. I 
hope what you have seen is that while striking uh, the pan, the energy was transferred in form of waves through the water in through uh, the construction paper into the beans which are bright, vibrated in the end. Um, now let me show this to you again. During the last three activities you have noticed that energy travels in form of waves through the material. Now if you hold on your hand to a piece of rock and strike it with the hammer, uh, do you think you could feel the same energy of waves? So here's the rock and the hammer. So I strike the rock with the hammer and I actually felt the vibration. So if you have a rock and a hammer, I encourage you to do uh, the same thing. And I really felt the vibration in my hand because the energy traveled in form of waves through the material. This, this is quite similar to that what happens actually during an earthquake. The waves produced during an earthquake are called seismic waves or also earthquake waves. They can be produced in general of course by earthquakes but also by large landslides, volcanic eruptions or even man-made explosions. Seismic waves travel quite fast, so the speed um, is about 2 to 8 kilometers per second and is similar to the speed of a rocket uh, which is leaving Earth to reach the outer space. So in general we can divide into two categories of seismic waves. We can divide into body waves and we can divide into surface waves. The main difference is that body waves um, uh, travel through the interiors of the Earth uh, so it travels through the body of the Earth. Surface waves, on the other hand, are waves that are traveling along or on the Earth's surface. The body waves, for example, even act differently while moving particles. So in the next activity, we are going to demonstrate body waves actually with, your own, with our own bodies. So please follow the instructions of your teacher. Your teacher will tell you where and how to do uh, the next activity. It can be either in the classroom or also in the schoolyard. It depends where you have more space. Now I'm going to show you how this activity works. Therefore my two colleagues will join me. And we are going to stand in a line side by side, feet shoulder wide apart. And one person at the end of the line will give us a gently push from the side. Then we turn to our upright position and please have a person record the time from the point of the push, uh, yeah, from the point of the push to me, and then until the last person returns inside the line to its upright position. So please take some time to do uh, the activity, and please answer the following questions. First, what happens to the group when the push comes from the side? Second, what happens to each body uh, during the push travels? Uh, through the different persons and please third uh, record how much time it takes for uh, for the push to travel through the whole group. We will return to see how you did. Have fun! Hi, welcome back. Now let's see how you did. I hope you had fun and nobody got hurt. Did you observe how the people moved back and forth parallel to the direction where the push came from? This motion is actually described as compressional motion. That means that material moves back and forth to the direction uh, from where the push came from, so from where the energy came from. Seismic waves also behave in this kind of motion, in this kind of compressional motion, so that the material um, is moving back and forth uh, to the direction where the wave is actually coming from. Similar to what you did uh, with your bodies in the last activity. Now I'm going to show you an animation which shows the same compressional motion. Please don't worry about the words written on the animation. Please just focus on the black spot on the animation. Do you see how the material is moved back and forth parallel to the direction of the wave. Do you see how the black spot is compressed and then expanded again? This is exactly uh, the compressional motion. Now that you know about compressional waves, now let's have a look at another type of wave, the shear waves. Therefore, my colleagues will join me to do this activity. And we will stand in a line 
and lock our arms like this. Then the first person of the line will bend until the waist and then we turn to our upright position. Please take some minutes to perform the activity and think about the following questions. First, how did each body react to the motion? Second, how long does it take from the first person to the last person to turn into the upright position again? And third, which wave was faster, the compressional wave or the shear wave? So please take some minutes to perform the activity and have fun. Hi, welcome back, I hope you had fun. So, did you observe how the people moved back and forth perpendicular to the direction where the push came from? This behavior or this motion is also called shear motion. In seismic waves we have also this type of motion so that the particles in the material are moved uh, side to side perpendicular to the, to the direction where the wave actually comes from. So here's the animation of the shear motion. Don't worry about all the words written on, on the animation. Please focus just on the black spot. Do you see how the black spot is moved up and down perpendicular to the direction where the wave comes from? This behavior is exactly described as shear motion. So now going back uh, to the motion you performed with our bodies, don't worry if you haven't observed the human body wave because especially where you were part of this wave. Now I'm going to collect some colleagues and we are going to show you the body wave on our own. So please follow me to the outside of our school building. So hi, welcome back. Now our group and our colleagues are going to perform the human compressional wave and therefore they are all standing in a line. We have one spotter in the end that looks for that no one gets hurt and we have one who will push the whole group. So I'm now counting down and then our colleagues will show you the compressional motion. Two, three, go! Cool, only nine seconds. So have you seen how the people moved back and forth uh, parallel to the direction where the push came from? So this was the compressional motion. Hi, welcome back. Now our group will perform the shear motion and they are all again in the line and when I count down they will start to show you this exactly shear motion. So in three, two, one, go! Woo! <laughs> so this was exactly 12 seconds, so this was far slower than the compressional motion. So now return and let's uh, discuss this in group. Now let's do just a quick recap what you did during the human body wave. You did both body waves, the compressional wave and the shear wave. The first type is the compressional wave, which can be also described as P or primary wave. The main important fact about compressional wave is that they uh, move the particles back and forth uh, parallel to the direction where the wave actually comes from. So they compress and expands material. The second type of body waves are the shear waves. They can be also called S waves or secondary waves. The main difference to the compressional waves is that they don't change uh, the density of the material because they move the particles side to side perpendicular to the direction where the wave comes from. Another way to demonstrate these both motions is by using a slinky. So this is a slinky and with the help of my colleague I'm going to stretch out the slinky. Each slinky has coils. So these are the coils of the slinky and I'm going to compress 5 to 10 coils. After I've compressed the coils I'm going to release them very rapidly. So after you have done this Please think about what type of motion was it, compressional wave or shear wave. 
For the second activity, there's actually no need to compress the coils again. You need to shake the slinky with the hand, so you take with the wrist of your hand, you shake the slinky rapidly like this. With the last activity, you're going to answer the question what type of motion is it? Is it compressional or shear motion? So please give these two activities a try and we will come back to see how you did. Welcome back, I hope you had fun with the slinkies and now we are going to demonstrate you how this should have looked like. So um, we are going to stretch out the slinky with the help of my colleague. And in the first activity I'm going to compress the coils and I'm going to release them rapidly. Have you observed how the coils move back and forth parallel to the direction where the motion came from? This exactly is the compressional motion, the compressional wave. I hope you guessed it right. In the second activity, you were asked to shake the slinky from side to side with your wrist, like this. Did you observe how the coils move back and forth, so side to side, perpendicular to the direction where the force came from? This is the shear motion or the shear wave. I hope you guessed it right. And now I'm going to introduce you to the second type of seismic waves. So the second type of seismic waves are the surface waves. They travel on and along the Earth's surface. There are two types of surface waves, the Rayleigh waves and the Laugh waves. The main difference is the following. Laugh waves move the particles in a way that they move them back and forth uh, horizontally. It can be compared like to the motion of a snake. Rayleigh waves uh, in contrast to that, move the particles uh, from the bottom up and roll them both vertically and horizontally. This motion can be compared uh, to like the motion of a wave in the ocean uh, which breaks in front of the surface line. Don't worry if this sounds uh, confusing, I'm going to show you some animations which dem demonstrate it better. So this is the Rayleigh wave animation. Please concentrate on the surface. Do you see how the particles are moved up and down? And then concentrate on the black spot. Do you see how this black spot is both moved up and down and side to side? Exactly this motion is called Rayleigh wave. So this animation is the love wave. Please concentrate on the black spot on top of the animation. Do you see how the particles are moved side to side like the movement of a snake? Exactly this motion is described as love wave. If you are wondering where this name comes from, love wave, it actually is generated by a British mathematician, mathematician who developed the model uh, for describing this type of wave in 1911. His name was Augustus uh, Edward Hugh Love. So now that you know both types of surface waves, Rayleigh wave and love wave, and how they move particles, please think about which of them both is even more destructive. Please discuss this in groups and we will come back soon. Hi, welcome back. Do you remember the picture from the beginning? Uh, from Bulgaria of my neighbor's house, I actually think that the Rayleigh wave caused these huge destructions. The Rayleigh wave moves particles in a rolling way and most old buildings which are not built according uh, to the standard of seismic uh, hazards, these buildings are the first to get, the, to get damaged. Now you may wonder how this knowledge helps you during an earthquake. Well, keep in mind that the compressional wave is the fastest in the crust, so it arrives at first. Except in the most powerful earthquakes, there in general the waves do not cause much damage. Shear waves are the second to arrive because they are compared to the P wave, to the compressional waves, uh, slower. But they are compared to compressional waves, they they cause more damage because their amplitude is greater. The last waves to arrive are the Rayleigh wave and the Love wave and they are the most destructive because their amplitudes diminish less rapidly than the amplitudes of the compressional wave and the shear wave. 
So this is also the cause why the love and radio waves uh, are the most important component of ground shaking during an earthquake. So the motions produced by these waves can be sometimes that much that one can be thrown onto the ground. In this way many injuries happen. So if you are in a building, in a safe building, uh, built according to seismic standards, please, and you are not near to an exit door which leads you to a safe space outside, drop yourself down, hold on to, your ta to a table, so that when the table is moved, you are moved with the table too. So that your so the most important thing is to keep your head and your neck safe during an earthquake. If you're near to an exit door that opens to a safe space, please go outside and keep away from falling objects. Please practice that and check out our other videos which shows you how to behave during, uh, before and after an earthquake. So before I say goodbye, I would like to leave you with some questions. Do you have a drill or emergency plan at the school? What is the most appropriate action to do during an earthquake? And does your family have an emergency plan at home? So thank you for your attention and goodbye. Hi, welcome to the Teacher's Gag. My name is Jessica Starke and I'm a PhD student from the University of Tübingen. At first, thank you very much for choosing this opportunity uh, to use this video lecture. The video lecture will take approximately uh, 50 minutes and will cover the topics P waves, S waves, Rayleigh waves and love waves. Please make sure before you start your lesson that you and your students are familiar with the following key terms and key concepts. So the terms are in general amplitude and wavelengths and the key concepts are the earth interior structure, plate tectonics, uh, the Earth's material properties, and earthquakes in general. So for the beginning of the lesson, I'm choosing a personal photo, but feel free uh, to modify this picture with the picture of a location which fits better to your location. During the first part of the lesson, I will ask the students to talk about their personal experiences during an earthquake, but please keep in mind that some students are not um, do not feel comfortable about talking their experiences so please be sensitive and you are the teacher so you are the judge uh, to evaluate if you're going to uh, lead a strong discussion on this topic. So for the first activity you need for the following materials uh, for the students. You're going to use a metal pen, uh, a handful of uh, rice or beans, it depends on you what type of material you're going to use. We use beans because they are more rounded and show the vibration better. You need water, spoon and a construction paper. For the human body waves, you only need a stopwatch to measure the time, how long it takes uh, for the group to, to propagate during the wave. So when you are going to perform the human waves, please make sure that each student can practice the wave. Uh, if you have a lot of students, uh, you can think about to split up the students into different groups and then perform uh, after each other the waves so that each student can see what happens during the wave. So during the human wave, please put uh, a person at the end of a line, a spotter, which takes care that the last person does not fall over uh, when he feels the push and the force from the side. Many of our segments are ending uh, with questions and uh, discussions. So please make sure to be familiar in advance with the questions and that you can lead uh, discussions on all these questions. For one activity we are using a slinky. Uh, you can decide either if you only use one slinky in front of the class and demonstrate uh, two activities with the slinky or you decide to use more slinkies and to divide the groups that each, each group can practice with the slinky. When you, are, um, when you are working with the slinky please keep in mind that uh, for the sheer motion you need uh, to repeat rapidly with your hand and the wrist uh, this kind of motion so that it is clearer instead of to use the arm to perform the side-to-side -side motion.
So we are ending the segment with some recommendations what to do during an earthquake. Uh, and I will ask the questions what kind of emergency and drill plans you have at your school. Before uh, you are going to do and to discuss these questions, please make, please make sure in advance that you are familiar with the emergency plans and drill plans of your school. In case you need more information, we are also posting uh, information on our site and please check out the following videos which deal about how to keep safe during an earthquake. In case you want to include more topics in your lesson, uh, you can include the following uh, further activities. You can include uh, the topic seismic, uh, seismic waves, so sound waves, because P waves are in the air sound waves. You can also include um, the topic hypocenter and epicenter, which are the main terms to describe what happens during an earthquake. And you can also include uh, the terms reflection and refraction, which describe what happens uh, with the rock material during an earthquake. Don't worry if you are not familiar with all these terms, uh, we have additional information on our uh, website which you can check out. Thanks so very much again for choosing this video lesson. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us and we are happy to help. Uh, you in any, in any way and uh, please feel free also to give us some uh, response and, and comments on how this video lesson worked in your school. Thank you and goodbye.